Brothers and sisters, there used to be a time in history where things were very clear and people would not argue about them. I'll give you an example. There used to be a time when someone was obese, fat, like myself. It was clear why the man was fat. It wasn't something people used to talk about. The man is fat because he eats too much, he doesn't exercise, he's eating at the wrong times. It was known, it was ma'roof, it was common knowledge. People didn't sit there and get into the theory as to why the man is fat. It's pretty clear. But today, we no longer live in that time. Today we live in a time when the reason and the excuses for me being obese has to do with anything and everything except me. You see, when I got married, I was 90 kilos. Now I'm 130. I weigh as much as a Hilux. And God forbid I should put my hand up and say that the reason why I weigh so much is because I eat too much. No, I point the finger at anyone and everyone except myself. My wife, my in-laws, I travel too much. I do this, I do that. Paint whatever picture you want. The truth and the haq is that you're overweight because of your own actions and nothing and no one else. Today, my brothers, we live in a time and in an era where nobody wants to put their hands up and take responsibility. Today, we live in a time, wallahi, we want deen, we want takeaway deen. We want drive through deen. I want to come to the masjid, I want to sit down for five minutes and you better wow me. Today, the only video that goes viral around the world is any video under seven minutes. Anything beyond that, too boring, man, too long. I want to learn Quran, I want to memorize Quran, but isn't there something quick? Isn't there something I can do online? God forbid we should sit down and do the long yards. God forbid, there used to be a time when if someone wanted to get big, it was ma'roof, it was common knowledge. People didn't talk and argue about it. You want to get big, you had to go to the gym. And when you went to the gym, you picked up raw iron and you put the dumbbells and you put it onto the bench press and you sat down and you ate well and you worked hard. It was known. Today, it's not the case. Today a brother, you know, I don't know about here in the UK, but in Sydney. One week is a pencil neck. Wallahi, if the wind comes too strong, yeah, you got to pick him up down the road. Because the wind will pick him up and take him. The brother vanishes for two, three weeks. He comes back, he's got muscles on his ears, ya Allah, muscles on his ears. Brother, how did you get so big? Oh, tuna and potato, bro. All the symptoms of steroids are all over his face. But he's trying to convince me that he got big because he's having tuna and potatoes. And when you take shortcuts, and when you take shortcuts, when your deen becomes drive through deen, you know what happens? There's side effects when you take steroids. There's side effects. We're living in a time, my brothers, you know the condition of the ummah. I challenge anyone here to stand up and tell me, brother, I'm happy and I'm content with the condition of the ummah. But whose fault is it? Whose responsibility is the ummah? Whose responsibility is this community that you and I live in? Every single person here will stand up and give me 150 names off the top of his head. And not one of those names will be himself. That the problem with the ummah, the problem with this, that and the other is because of the ulama, because of the mashayikh, because of the da'is, because of the seniors, because of the committees of our masjid. They're too old school, they don't allow us to do this and they don't allow us to do that. And it's this, that and the other. But God forbid, any one of you should be man enough to stand up and say that the problem with the ummah is people like me. Responsibility has left the Muslims now. There used to be a time in the Ummah when we were men. We were men. We were true and sincere. We were man enough to admit when we were wrong. Today we don't do this anymore. The Prophet of Allah when he spoke about the Ummah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he gave the analogy of the Ummah, what analogy did he give? He says the analogy, the example of my Ummah is like that of one body. This Ummah is one body. He says when a part of it hurts, the whole body feels the pain. When a part of the body hurts, he says the whole body stays up the night in sleeplessness, in fever. Why? In fighting off the pain, in fighting off the infection. Today, do you feel like we are one body? Today, are we honestly, genuinely concerned about what's happening around the world? 
Do you feel, do you honestly deem yourself to be a part of the body and to be responsible? You know, my brothers, my time is short. You know what? Let's drop the issue about what's happening around the world. Let's talk about what you and I do because what you and I do has a direct effect towards this ummah. Every sin you commit has a direct effect on every single person that has Tawheed and Iman in his heart. Because I have news for you. That day that you decided to be a Muslim, the day that you decided to say La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, you entered the fold of Islam. And when you entered the fold of Islam, you fell under the umbrella of the Ummah. And when you became a member of the Ummah, you became a part of the body. So what you do has an effect on the Ummah. People think that, listen, you know what? If I don't want to pray, that's none of your business. It's between me and Allah. Have you ever heard this? That no one can judge me. Only God can judge me. Wow. Big round of applause for this brother. Hey. Only God can judge me. Well, duh, yes, only God can judge you. But unfortunately, brother, I have news for you. Your shortcomings has an effect on me, has an effect on my wife, has an effect on my children, and has an effect on the rest of the ummah. So it's not up to me to allow you to do your wrong and to do your haram and not stand before you, right? And give you clear warning that what you're doing is wrong and batil. The Prophet of Allah in the Sahih Hadith, وَالَّذِي نَفْسِ بِيَدِي The Prophet of Allah takes an oath by Allah. He says, you either enjoin that which is good and you forbid that which is wrong. This is a responsibility upon everyone. It's not the responsibility of the mashayikh. It's not the responsibility of the ulama. It's the responsibility of every person that has iman and tawheed in his heart to call to that which is good and forbid that which is wrong. Why, O Prophet of Allah? What if I don't want to do it? What if it's none of my business? What if I want to do my own thing? He says, you will do it. Oh, by Allah, Allah Azza wa Jal will send down his punishment upon you. You will raise your hands and make dua and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not accept your prayers. What are you doing with your life? What are you doing with your life? Look at what's happening. Look at what's happening to us around the world. Look what's happening to you in your own country. You know, when I left my house, when I left my home in Sydney to come here, I... I I went to the airport four hours early. Four hours early. Why? Because I was mentally prepared for the interrogation to why I'm leaving my own country. I've become a criminal in my own house. I had paperwork ready and prepared. Why? Because I was mentally prepared that when I get to London airport, I was ready for a three, four hour interrogation. For what? For no other reason except for the fact that I look like a Muslim. And you know that's the truth. Yet what are we doing about it? We are an ummah. We are one unit. We are not individuals. We don't have that luxury. You don't have the luxury of saying, brother, only God can judge me. Leave me alone. Let me do as I please. No, my brother, because what you do has an effect on me and what I do has an effect on you. So you're probably thinking, you know, yeah, akhi, you know what? But what's your dalil, bro? Because when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deals with the Muslims, he deals with them as an ummah. When the khairat and the barakah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala falls down, who does it fall down upon? It falls upon everyone. And when the punishment of Allah falls, who does it fall on? It falls upon everyone. This is Allah's system. This is how Allah works. When His rahmah falls, everyone feeds off it. And when the hadab and the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the curse and the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala falls, everyone cops it. When Musa alayhi salatu was salam, when his people were going through a drought, no water, no food, no crops, Plants were dying, nothing was growing, animals were dying, nothing to drink, nothing to eat. Human beings were dying and suffering. Amongst them is a prophet. So the people came to Musa and said, Yeah, Musa, what's going on? Musa raises his hands and he says, Oh Allah, you can see what's happening to my people. Ya Allah, we're begging, we're asking for rain. Musa asked for rain, they're waiting for the clouds to come in, nothing happened. So Musa says, Ya Allah, what's happening? Now listen to what Allah says. He says, Ya Musa, from amongst your people, there is one sinner. One! How many sinners are in our towns? How many of our Muslims don't pray? How many of our sisters are still unscarved? 
How many of our elders still cannot read Fatiha properly? Ya Musa, from amongst your people is one sinner and because of him and him alone I have deprived the rain from falling. So you can come to me now and talk to me about justice and wisdom and is this fair all night long. Doesn't change the fact that Allah deprived rain upon a prophet, upon people, upon innocent women and children and animals and crops because of the actions of one man. One man! So Musa turns to his people. He says, oh my people, amongst you is a sinner. Come out and make yourself known. Imagine this man has now been addressed by a prophet and now he comes to realize that because of my sin, because of my shortcoming that I thought no one knows about except me and Allah, now this man comes to realize that because of my shortcomings, all my people have been suffering because of my sin. Imagine that feeling. So Musa says, make yourself known. Come forward. Imagine the embarrassment. So this man now realizes, so the man repents, he makes tawbah to Allah. But doesn't make himself known to Musa. So Musa waits for the man to come forward. No one comes forward. Musa goes back, asks Allah. And to his amazement, the rain comes and starts falling down. So yes, of course, Musa is happy the rain is there, but now he's baffled. Now listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to him. He says, Ya Musa, I deprived the rain from coming because of him and him alone. But that person, he turned back to me and he asked for my forgiveness. I accepted his tawbah. And now because of him and him alone, I've allowed the rain to fall down. So Musa is now interested. He says, Oh Allah, Tell me who this man is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Musa, He says, Ya Musa, I didn't expose him when he was a sinner. What makes you think I'm going to expose him now that he's repented and turned back to me? You know what's the amazing part of this story? It's not the fact that Allah allowed the rain to come. You know what I find is interesting? What I find interesting is this man that was man enough to admit, was man enough to stand up and say, hey, I am in the wrong. He was man enough to acknowledge the fact that his shortcomings made his people suffer. And he was man enough to turn back to Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted him. A quality that most of us fail in. Where are those that are prepared to stand up and say, hey, you know what's happening around the world? It's because of people like me. It's because of my shortcomings. It's because of my lack of deen. It's because of my sins at night. It's because of my eyes that I can't keep down. It's because of my actions. No. We point the finger at anyone and everyone except myself. Allah says he will not change the condition of a people until they, the people, until they change the condition of themselves. My brother and sister, what you do in your life has a direct effect not only on the Muslims but upon yourself. What you do, whatever it is, your sins, whatever it is that you have in your life that is wrong and haram, it has an effect on your children. It has an effect on your mother and your father. It has an effect on the whole ummah. And the opposite is true. Wallahi, when, any, when any one of you does a good action, know that not only do you benefit, but the rest of us also benefit from your good actions. We have Tawheed. We fall under the, we fall under the banner of Islam. This is an Ummah. Whoever has La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, and he says this sincerely, he's a Muslim whether you like it or not, whether he prays in your masjid or not, whether he follows your Imam or not. Whoever has Iman and Tawheed and clearly says it, whether you like it or not, your Mashaykh accept it or not, it doesn't change the fact that he's a Muslim. And unless there is clear kufr on his tongue and on his hands, he's a believer whether you like it or not, he's a part of the ummah. Who died and gave any one of us the authority to say who is and who is it a Muslim? Something that the companions never dared on doing. The Prophet of Allah who had the munafikin that lived around him, they lived around him, he had him on a list. 
He had them on a list that even his closest companions didn't have the luxury of knowing. And you and I want to walk around and claim who is and who isn't a Muslim. We don't have peace in our own communities. We have disunity in our own masjids. And we want the world to love Islam. We don't have love in our own families. We don't have love. Tolerance and acceptance. Disunity has become the norm. Laughing and mocking and ridiculing one another has become the norm and accepted. Any cowboy picks up a phone, records himself thrashing imams and scholars and this, that and the other. And we ask, why is this happening to us? You and I are responsible. You and I, my brothers, what you and I do has an effect on this ummah. But what are you doing to spread the love? Brother, I'm a nobody, man. No one's going to listen to me. See this mentality that I'm a nobody, that I'm a nothing? When you start believing that you're a nothing, you become nothing. When you start believing that I'm a nobody, I've got news for you, you become a nobody. Our spirit's been broken. Our attachment to our deen has been lost. When Muhammad al-Fatih was four years old, four years old, four, ya Allah, four years old, his mother used to take him to the seashore and she used to show him Constantinople by the seashore. And she used to tell him, Muhammad, you see that place there? She used to tell her, yes, mom. She used to tell him, one day you're going to open and conquer that place. Four years old. Today, when a young four-year-old comes, get out of here, man. Shh, get out of here. Today the brother's 10 years old, 15 years old, and you and I, let's be honest, you look at this guy, he's young, he's an idiot. Hey, just go home and play your Sony PlayStation. <coughs> when you start addressing our children like they're nothing, they become nothing. Whose fault's this? What government is telling you to speak to your child like he's an idiot? <coughs> Which system ever put a gun to your head and set you to speak down at your wife and speak down at your children? Allah, my brothers, we need to wake up. The solution to all of your problems is our deen. There is no other answer, Akhi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Al-yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum. Today your, your religion has been completed and perfected. Any problem, any trial, any tribulation, any hardship that you ever face in your life, you will find the full answer in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You want answers? Come to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I left you on the clear road, the Prophet of Allah says. I left you on the clear road. You know why there's doubt? You know why there's confusion? Because it's missing in our lives. It's missing in our lives. Today, the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what's it become now? Brothers, fard or sunnah? Sunnah. Oh, I thought it was fard. I thought I had to do it. You see this statement? He said, the difference between us and the sahaba is we left every sunnah of Rasulullah because it was only sunnah. Whereas they performed every sunnah because it was his sunnah. You want happiness and success? You want change? Then understand it will not come until the full sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa comes into your life. So I've spoken too much. I think I'm pretty clear with what I'm saying. We need to stand up and start taking responsibility. We need to start raising our hands and say, I am responsible. It is because of me. It is because of me. 
Don't worry about the next masjid and don't worry about the next imam. You and I need to change. You and I need to be that man that was from the people of Musa and said, I, I am the one that's in the wrong. You and I need to stand up and repent. You and I need to start making a move. You and I need to take a step closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If not for your sake, then do it for the women. Do it for the children of our ummah who are suffering because of our actions. Are we ready inshallah?